Thank you very much. Uh, welcome once again to our weekly video production. Um, usually this used to be a live broadcast on Instagram where I have chat with my guests. But we have a very interesting one this time around. This is going to be a recorded episode. And uh, when you deal with professionals, they behave like professionals. Uh, the person I'm interviewing is in charge of camera operations. He's done that for many years. And so he has made this possible for us to have a live uh, recording with him in the city of Jaws. And uh, it's a pleasure to welcome Mr. Ihenacho Iweha. He's been a friend. He's been a brother. He's a lecturer. He's a playwright. He's a social entrepreneur. And um, he lectures currently at the Federal College of Education, Zaria. And he's the director of TCL um, uh, camera school. They have been involved for the past 15 years in training camera operators where they, they bring young people who are interested in camera operations and technical productions together. They train them and then, you know, release them. They go for internship and subsequently they are released into the labor market. And the good part of this story um, I'm telling you is that they are employed. They work in big media houses, they work with international uh, non-governmental organizations, and they are doing very well. As a matter of fact, I'm sure this recording is done by one of the products of the school. So he's been doing this for the past 15 years as a way of addressing unemployment. And with the, the, the statistics that we have today of unemployment in Nigeria, he's a strategic and key person that we can speak with on how young people can better their lives with their hand skills. We know graduates who have finished from his school. We know people who have not even got into higher institution that have attended his training. And not only have they attended his training, they got jobs for themselves. They are doing well. Some are training themselves in schools. And so these are issues that are burning in my heart when I think of people like him and the contribution he has made into the society. Subsequently, I'll be taking him up on how he's been able to navigate supposed unemployment by volunteering service, which he did for almost 10 years. And then when the job was going to come, it came big, you know. So welcome with me, Mr. Mr. Ihena Choi Weha, a friend, a brother. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Thank God you so much, sir. It's a pleasure. Thank it's you so much. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's really an amazing uh, journey. And I want to thank uh, Shola for organizing this uh, event. This is all part of, you know, filling the gap. Yeah. Uh, government can do it alone. Yes. We need individuals, special individuals, who will fill that gap and bring this consciousness to the people. So I'm so delighted to be on this program today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. So uh, tell us a little more about yourself. Okay. Um, as has been said, um, my name is Ihana Cho Iwea. I'm from Abia State. Um, born in Kano, grew up in Jaws. Um, I run the Theater Mass um, Initiative. Um, we are involved in uh, entrepreneurship uh, training. We train young people in camera operations. That's actually one aspect of uh, the entire vision. Uh, we also uh, train young people in script writing acting and speech, we discovered that there's a lot of issues in emotional intelligence. Uh, young people are not confident to talk. And so we have this training for acting and speech. And then we do trainings in directing. And then uh, we reach out to secondary schools across the country. Every year, uh, we have a cumulative outreach of about uh, between 80 to 90 outreaches to secondary schools across the country. And um, this year, early this year, we were in Mongo, and we had a Valentine outreach uh, where we went to about uh, 16 schools in that local government, uh, took, uh, presenting plays on exam practice, on uh, punctuality issues, on um, abortion issues, sexuality issues, and um, entrepreneurship issues too, uh, because the curriculum as it is is not enough to cater for all these things. You know, our schools run. Uh, a syllabus or subject system, and we are hoping that through this place we are able to augment 
some values that the schools will actually want their children uh, to have. So it's an interesting, um, you know, experience. And we are glad that we've been doing this for about 15 years now and counting. Thank you so much. So um, let's begin from TCL. I remember when you started, <laughs> it's already 15 years. Amazing. Um, at the point you started, what was the motivation? You know, because unemployment wasn't even an issue yeah. uh, this much yeah. back then. Yeah. But you just carried the burden and then you, 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 you picked that up and then enrolled young people. What was the motivation? Actually, the, the main motivation, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, I told from the moral standpoint, okay. I had a very serious concern about the morality of uh, cameramen, media practitioners generally. Uh, I was doing my uh, internship then, uh, 99, 2000, and I was in the station where um, the cameraman uh, was asked to go cover an event, and he he he, he wouldn't go. Okay. And when he was asked why, he said he conflicted with his moral values. Okay. And they asked another cameraman to go and do that, and he went and did it. So, and I was so concerned that I mean, this cameraman uh, stood for his values, and actually, what he was asked to cover, I didn't see how he was going to add, you know, moral value to society except for the uh, pay yes yeah, okay. they said let them pay uh, uh, you know so yeah, so i i i said i would want to train cameramen who would do a very good job but also stand for their moral value their conscience as far as it adds value mm. to society you know amazingly people ask people don't people don't want to know who are who behind the negative media mm -hmm. we see, whether it's pornography, whether it's indecency, whatever it's called, mm -hmm. for every media production, for mm -hmm. every video clip, for everything you see mm -hmm. visually on screen, mm -hmm. the cameraman is behind it. Mm -hmm. The cameraman is behind it. Mm -hmm. And so we need to also deal with the morality yeah. of the cameraman. Secondly, the issue of unemployment. Mm -hmm. I felt that we, ha we are having young people who we are waiting for the job waiting for that job, <laughs> you know? Uh, and some will even delay, uh, they are going to university mm. until they get the particular course they want. Mm. And by the, by the time you know it, 10, 10 years is gone mm. of their lives. Mm. So I said, why not have something doing mm. while waiting for that mm. ideal mm. job? <laughs> and uh, when it comes, mm. go ahead. Right. When it doesn't come, mm. you are doing something you are happy about mm. and you're getting paid for mm. it. And so I began that in uh, 2005, and we were able to see that these products were selling hot. Mm. Uh, they were competing very well with those who had had other qualifications and yet stayed behind the camera. And we felt this was something we needed to do. All right, so we kept doing that. And today, uh, cumulatively, we have over 200. Uh, people don't okay. yes wow this is amazing you you've you've touched on a point a number of things that i i will want to portray on one of them you mentioned the fact that people wait for what they want and they are not doing anything and i remember my first encounter with you was not actually um on the school point it was that you were acting i remember you were acting you had some playlists those days that you Sorry. used to act and then many years later we were going to meet in the university right and then, so you you weren't just idle and then you know doing nothing you are building yourself and that also became a burden for you to see young people getting some things done yes, and then you mentioned the issue of value a, a a young man who said i'm not going to do this because it contradicts my values yes. in career assessment or when you are deciding which job to take there are basic things there are basic things you need to consider there are four of them and this we do on our career assessment package. If you go to careerwise.ng, you see some of our offerings there. There are four areas of careers that you need to consider. Number one is your personality. Okay? If you're an introvert, you don't need to get a job as a salesperson or get a job as a customer relations person. Mm -hmm. You get bored with people talking with you. There are better jobs you could do. Well, you might be able to do that, but is it like exactly much effort on you to get the best out of you. 
But if you're an extrovert, wow, you could be in sales. You could be in customer relations, right. you know. So your personality is important in choosing a career. Second thing that is important is your interest. What are the things that interest you? Mm -hmm. I know people who don't like seeing blood. Mm -hmm. So you have no, no reason being a medical doctor. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even need to think about it. Right. You, you don't like the sight of blood. Mm -hmm. Don't even go to abattoir. Don't even try to be a butcher person. Mm -hmm. Because that is not your area of interest. There, is some, there are things you will see and you'll be excited. Right. It could be football. It could be media. It could be so many other things. So your interest is also important. Then number three, skills. Okay, what are you equipped for? Some people are not good with technical issues. If you tell them, remove this knot and put it here, they forget almost immediately as they are removing it. <laughs> now, they will kill people if they have to be behind aircraft or some other engineering work. Okay, so you, you need to know what are the skills you are actually drawn to. Then the fourth one is issue of value. You can't choose a career without considering your value. Okay. If you are a family person, don't choose a job that will take you away from family almost half of the year. If you are someone who is um, morally minded, you don't want to take a job that takes you away far from your faith. If you are someone who is, um, uh, by reason of value, very conservative, you don't have to take a job that is going to expose some part of you. Just, these, these four areas are very key. In, but... I'm glad that you brought them up, yes. but you could hear more about it uh, in the course of our discussion. Yes. I want to find out again yes. from you, having said this, that you went into all of this and you have produced almost over 200 people. Right. How do you feel when those who you have trained are not only gainfully employed, but somehow also providing employment for others? Right. Um, I think that um, that's one of the most satisfying moments in my life. And that's where I place this feedback above the, the, the monetary value that we take. It will also interest you that we do not charge uh, for our trainings. It's free of charge. Uh, for the past 15 years, we've been doing that free of charge. And um, when I see young people who've gone through this training, you know, coming to say, sir, I work in so and so place now. Um, I am married. <laughs> I attended some naming ceremonies recently of, of these ones. And uh, I mean, it makes you truly, truly fulfilled. I don't think there's anything else in this world that can equate that. The, the satisfaction that you've not only given a man or a woman uh, a piece of fish, but you've actually taught them how to fish uh, themselves. So I, I really get fulfilled uh, because... When I look at the, 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 the list, it's amazing. Uh, some of them are also um, giving themselves to uh, what I would call the fake media. Um, in churches now, uh, very big churches, they are in charge of the media, uh, the churches. And when we were doing this, um, what kept coming to our mind was also to prepare the church uh, for a media war, for a media crisis. And when this corona issue came, it dawned on us that that was the preparation, one of the preparations, because a lot of our people, uh, alumni who have gone to training, were able to help their churches to stream messages. Like, there are churches who couldn't do that, you know, that the coronavirus issue hit very hard. Church was completely non existent, mm -hmm. and even to coordinate communications was a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know of a church that will stream live, mm -hmm. I know of a church that will also go as far as pre-recording uh, the person's message mm. and making it available in, in formats that zones could use. Mm. And so they were not completely disconnected, mm. even with the corona uh, virus. So I, I believe that the media goes into almost every area, mm. uh, the military, the medicals, every area of life, uh, because there's always a need for documentation as a need for dissemination of information and so on. So um, uh, right now, I have a lot of them who are in federal, in federal service, in state service, who are working on their own. I have one recently who is the PA on, on media for uh, a local government uh, chairman. And it's amazing that because of the exposure, and we also tell them, why you are doing this with us, we encourage you to go to school. It's amazing that some of them who came 
TCL was their first post secondary education. education. Mm. And today, uh, some of them have uh, their diplomas from normal, normal schools, they have degrees, they have masters. Mm. About two of them now are doing their PhD. Wow. Wow. It's amazing. Wow. It's amazing wow. that they still look back and say, this has, has really happened. I'm so proud of you. Welcome to careerwise.ng, your career solution site. What we do basically is provide assessment for you, coaching for you, recruitment, internship. We have coaches. Orlando is a coach from Brazil, an international coach. Lara Langham from UK, my humble self. And we have some other coaches from Nigeria. You can go on our website, careerwise.ng. Use the contact form and reach out to us. Meet us on Twitter. We are careerwise.ng1. Instagram, we are on Facebook. Reach out to us. We are available to help you. Wow. That's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm always excited. I remember some two or three years ago, or four years ago, yes. you invited me. I was part of the, right, the, right. The, the YouTube yeah, uh, 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 workshop. Yeah, it's workshop. Great. I facilitated. And, and did we know that this was happening? This was going we to didn't come. know. We we're talking about streaming live and all of that. <laughs> and uh, today, that's the reality. Um, we have to stream our services live. And you've done a great job. I want to know precisely if I remember very well, in the course of searching for admission, did you want to study medicine or they wanted you to study medicine? Then how did you end up in the arts? How did you end up being fulfilled? You are, you are one person I know that is very fulfilled on your job. Yeah. You are very fulfilled. If you could offer training for people for 15 years for free of charge, I mean, there is no fulfillment that is more than that. Not because you have all the money in the world. How did you end up discovering this is where you are meant to be? It's a, it's a very, very long story, <laughs> but I'll, cut, I'll make it short. Um, of course, we, we are also victims of um, parental um, influence. influence. Uh, my dad would just sit us down and say, um, you will be our doctor, uh, you will be our lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, you know why I laugh today is because my my my, my dad is late, but, yeah. but, but, but before he died, he was yeah. able to see that um, his population didn't work out quite well yeah. because my younger brother he 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 wanted to be a lawyer. He's a he's a he's a military officer today, <laughs> and then I was to be the doctor, yeah. and um, <laughs> I'm a theater artist today, and um, you know they they had good intentions. Yeah. Okay, the whole idea was. Um, how do we make sure that you're able to take care of your family mm -hmm. and uh, give us a sense of fulfillment? Mm -hmm. So, um, my dad, I wanted me to be a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. And I think they, they were able to push me along that line. Mm -hmm. uh, I began to have some, I began to have some love for actually veterinary medicine, mm -hmm. not even the human medicine. Mm -hmm. Because when I saw uh, an accident yeah. uh, that was terrible, mm -hmm. I changed my mind to veterinary medicine uh, so that um, it could it could relieve me of uh, yes so yes so I love animals I think I do well with them yeah. I read them without any problem yeah. uh, but that was not, that wasn't enough you know yeah. I I didn't quite do well uh, with my sciences yeah. I was struggling yeah. and um, eventually I I passed okay, okay passed out with my Passes, especially a pass in uh, in chemistry and the rest. But I knew I wasn't cut out for it. Uh, I kept trying. I wrote work several times as a science student. It didn't just click. And I think one of these days, uh, when I began finding my space uh, in terms of my spirituality, um, I had a conversation with God, and He told me, "Okay, let's 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 strike a deal. Let's let's strike a deal." Um, I will allow you uh, make your papers now, mm -hmm. and then get admission to <laughs> to read medicine. Wow. You will finish medicine, wow. everything, wow. and then when you are done, wow. you will come back and do what I wanted to do. Wow, wow! So I calculated it will at least take me a year mm. to um, get my papers, then another year to get into the institution? high institution. Then to spend was it seven or eight years? Yeah, yeah, seven years. Come on, what are you looking for? Medicine. Medicine. And then when I'm done with that, 
I will now come and do what he wants me to do. I think I knew that maths very wow. well. Yeah, wow. I think I was able to calculate that maths. <laughs> and I knew that uh, that would be 10 years of my life wasted. And I said, no, God, I think I would rather go for what you want me to go. So he said, well, so you will still go. Go back and write for arts. Okay. And yeah, admission. And and I wrote my arts once. Mm. I didn't go for any extramora. Mm. I just went back to pick the, the, the courses, government, literature, mm. uh, CRS, and the rest. And I wrote them just once. Wow. And I got them. I wrote my, my jam once. Wow. I still remember I had was it two forty six or so. Yeah. I it uh, it was it wasn't it, no 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 no, no struggle. struggle no struggle. Mm. It was just what I loved doing. Mm. And uh, mm. he told me clearly this is what you are going to read. Mm. Uh, it was theatre art, mm. and um, but he was taking me through some processes. processes. So I had to go to the TV college yeah. uh, to do a diploma in television production and design. And then when, when I was done with that, I. I went in for uh, degree. degree, and with full uh, consciousness of my mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. I applied for theatre arts, arts. and um, I was given theatre arts. Yeah. Uh, I saw the, the list in the Vanguard newspaper, yeah. and I saw my classmates there, and, and that's how we began uh, at the University of Jos. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the only university yeah. uh, in the country. Um, it's the only university, uh, you know. So. Um, we we had spent four good years yeah. at the university studying under great scholars like Professor Ila, yeah. Professor Duga, yeah. you know, Professor Tor, Professor yeah. Embo, yeah. a lot of them, Professor Nahoro, yeah. a film professor, and so many of them, Lati, Professor Salami, yeah. you know, Ogalati, yeah. who taught us the active movements, Professor Inyage, yeah. taught me skip writing and the rest. And I felt really fulfilled, mm. and I couldn't just wait, mm. you know, to uh, get this across. So I keep telling young people, um, it's truly about the interest. Yeah. Um, I think if if your mind is not in what you're reading, yeah. tell yourself the truth yeah. and, and go back and get find, it right. Find, find, your, find it. Find uh, you will do well. It doesn't mean that you may not uh, fail some courses mm. if you are careless, yeah. but I don't think you want to do the TDB thing, yeah. put your leg yeah. Yeah. in water, water, take coffee, uh, I still, to study I still what... make a pass. <laughs> <laughs> make a pass. <laughs> So I, I want to truly advise young people out there that interest is key. Wow. And society is changing now. Wow. Wow. I remember when I went to the UK uh, to have my first uh, international reading of my plays. Um, before I came back, don't forget, my dad was angry that I was reading theatre arts. Yes. And he told me one day, you mean you've not finished playing? <laughs> now you want to play and have a degree? A degree for playing, you know, oh it was very. How will you feed your family? Oh what kind of thing is this? Just play, you know. <laughs> so when I went to England, uh, the UK for that program, yeah. before I came back, my dad had organized a Thanksgiving service, oh, yeah. you know, to tell his people that uh, his son played to uh, learn. You know? <laughs> so when I came back, I asked him. I said, Ah, you went all the way to do Thanksgiving. He said, Yes. Is it easy? How many people in this village have gone to the, to, to the UK? I said, But you didn't tell them I went to play. <laughs> He said, "Look at me. Come on, forget about that. The fact is that you're, you're going to the UK, you know, and and, and it was really that my play or my fight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was it was really really oh uh, amazing. And then it dawned on me really yeah. that what parents just want yeah. is to see that their children succeed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not necessarily not necessarily that yeah. you have to read what they say, mm. but." Are you giving signs that mm. you love what you're doing mm. and, and you, you will succeed? Yes, that's it. And I, I want to say that parents just keep pushing us. Yeah, yeah but, but allow us to make that ultimate decision mm. based on the interest mm. we have. And I think every parent will know mm. where the interest of the child is. Mm. You will know. You will just see it. You just see it displayed. Play out. Yes. Yeah. Now, the work has to start very much earlier. I know of a man, a medical doctor, with his own private hospital. And then he just wanted his first uh, born to be a medical doctor. And of course, the young lady tried four times and failed four times. I know of another one who also, I think he read zoology, and wanted the doctor to read some, no, um, no, not zoology, uh, microbiology. I wanted the doctor to read something in sciences. The young lady ended up uh, as a banking and finance graduate, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. because that was where her interest lies. And you have just cap it up. Mm -hmm. Parents, it's true you want your children to succeed. 
but you probably might not know what their interest is or their interests are. You know, uh, these days there are jobs that you don't even know anything about. Mm -hmm. You know, children say they want to be space inventors. Mm -hmm. And you ask yourself, what, what is space invention Astronaut. all about? AI, <laughs> AI engineers. Yes, AI engineers. These mm -hmm. jobs were not available. Unthinkable. Even now, they are still not very much available in Nigerian context. Yes. But globally, they are available. When you talk to a child and you are talking, you are saying some things, they just see that you don't understand what is happening currently. Even from their cartoons, you know, super book story. So it's important, and for you who, are, who is out there, if you are making a career choice, please, if you are not fulfilled, it's not too late to come back. I mean, um, our guest today, he just mentioned this thing as if they are in passing. <laughs> You don't want to know how many years he lost in yeah. writing those papers again. Yeah. I speak with you, as, as, I, as I speak with you, I had to write O-Level five times. Mm -hmm. I had to write Jump five times. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the interests of people who love you, uncles, brothers, parents, are not the same as yours. Mm -hmm. And then you just, you just want to find fulfillment. Mm -hmm. I've always known that I was going to end up somewhere in the media. Mm -hmm. I've always known that. I'm glad that I eventually, by chance, study theatre mm -hmm. arts because... I'm able to bring out my creativity. Uh, but I want to talk about what you said about yes. God giving you time for 10 years mm. to go do what you want to do, then to come back. Mm. And you reasoned that this was going to take too much of your time. Okay. It was going to be a waste of your time. Know. What words do you have for those who are not fulfilled in what they are doing or in what they are studying currently? Okay. Um, last year, just before the lockdown, I had a course to speak to a young man. The elder sister, who is my friend, called me and said, my brother is no longer uh, serious in school. He's not doing well. He said he wants to abandon the course for something else. And I realized what he was going through. It was a serious crisis. So I called him up. And then he was able to open up to me. So I gave him a word of advice. So he moved from one department to another department. So as just to continue his education for his interest to be in what he's doing. What word do you have for people who are... Currently in school, they are not doing exactly what they want, or they are already working, but they are frustrated every day. Once it's Monday, they are frustrated. Mm -hmm. Monday is equal to frustration. Mm -hmm. They are not finding fulfillment. If you don't pay them for one month, they lose it all because their heart is not there. What word? How do they change course to where they belong? Because you're finding your, your path in life has helped over 200 people. That's right. In the immediate. That's right. We have not talked about extension. That's right. So you lose your path. Everybody connected to you yeah. Yeah. get lost yes. in darkness. Yes, so what exactly do you think they can do? I will tell them to, one, uh, be patient. Uh, patience is a virtue. Um, so that you can reevaluate that situation. Uh, some have a lot of options. Like you said, if I am in 200 level, for instance, and the course I'm reading is, is not what I want to, uh, university systems are designed such a way that uh, there are interdepartmental uh, Transfer. transfers, sometimes even interfaculty. Mm. Uh, if you make your case well mm. to your dean, mm. uh, and so they can uh, switch you over, probably you may just repeat 200 level, and your your credit loads for 100 level is yes. kept for you, exactly. and so on. So uh, that's that's a possibility. Mm. For others, uh, if you are in in sciences, for instance, and you need to be in arts, mm. uh, sometimes it may be difficult. But if you have a very good dean, if you start very early at 100 level, well, they may keep your admission for you so that you go and start from 100 level again mm. in the sciences. Yeah. But in other, in other climbs, you may just have to just withdraw from that art okay. and then go back to the sciences. Yeah. Um, but I have this little cats mm -hmm. that with the advent of the internet and so on yeah. uh, see if, if you're not failing yes the course you're reading now yeah. you're just not happy with it but you're not failing you're doing well averagely doing well mm -hmm. i would say finish that course mm -hmm. it's just four years mm -hmm. probably in your second year finish it get that degree mm -hmm. but you may have been you may would want to consider doing some online courses okay. in the area you truly love okay. so that if after your first degree you want to make that migration mm. to where you want to be, you don't come in there as a novice mm. again. Mm. You know there are courses that, for instance, uh, you do a first degree in theatre, yeah. in mass comm, in English. Yeah. You could 
qualify for a master's in law and diplomacy. That's true. It's, 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 it's there. Yeah. You qualify for a course in master's in conflict and uh, peace resolution. Yeah. There are some master courses that are broad. Yeah. They allow people from different disciplines to yeah. come. And sometimes by doing that, you begin to understand where you want to be. So I will advise that young people be patient, weigh your options, self-study is very key. And a lot of things now on Twitter, I don't know whether I will be doing an, an advert here mm. because I have, to, I have proven that mm. there's a program, there are free programs on Future Learn. Yeah. Uh, you can do that. They will allow you to do a free program. Yeah. They may not give you a certificate for it, yeah. but you do it. And if you like it, you just pay some extra money mm. and get certification for that training. Yeah. There are courses that actually you pay for, but they are not too expensive. Mm. And you know, before now, when we talk about online, Learning yeah, yeah. people frown at it, they say it's not the same thing, yeah. they say it's less yeah. that. But with the coronavirus, who is saying that now? <laughs> who is saying that now? Is gone online. Who is saying that now? I mean, now my school has done her conference online. Mm. I've attended conferences in Casina mm. right while I was here mm. online. Mm. We are hosting another one in November mm. online. Mm. Who is who is who is saying who is saying anything now? Mm. Because the reality mm. of the dynamics of development has changed. Mm. So, and the young people are even at the advantage. Mm. They are the digital yeah. uh, natives. natives yeah. You don't struggle to navigate with this uh, internet and the rest. Yeah. Go study online. Mm. Even if you are in a conventional university mm. doing what you love, mm. they don't teach you everything. Mm. Try and get some extra knowledge mm. online. Mm. Enjoy it. Go to YouTube. Mm. Go to websites mm. check this is out mm. and i'm sure you'll come out a better wow. person so i had to make that i had to come to a point where i had to tell myself the truth and i think i come to a place where uh parental influence were a bit less i was beginning to uh, behave like an adult mm. and I, I i had to just reason that out how can i spend another 10 years of my life mm. doing something i'm not caught out for mm. and i went back to to the arts and I enjoyed it. There was no dull moment. Yeah. I I take my assignment seriously. Yeah. I loved doing it. And I was able to engage with my colleagues. So I would all I would advise young people to please uh, don't be carried away. This this is no longer the era mm. of saying my friend is reading this. I want to read that. I think they've been telling us young yeah. people yeah. that they are very smart. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to read that they, that they should be smart. I mean there has, there has not been any error that young people have openly advantage yes, right now. have openly said I want <laughs> to do what I want to do. And I'm saying I agree with you yeah. that you do what you want to do. Yeah. As long as you're able to convince me yeah. that that's your interest, yeah. you don't have any struggle with it, yeah. you will take it seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm in with you 100%. So do your self-study, use your data wisely, search for things and go for what you truly really want to do. I mean, these days they get scholarships yeah. even and from their yes. Thank you very much. Uh, you just mentioned scholarship. I, uh, I'm, I'm glad you know you mentioned that. A young man met me yesterday after the service, and then just told me he sent me a letter, uh, much later, of a scholarship he got in Canada. Now he's from a very humble background, very humble background. I know his family, but he was able to secure scholarship, and he has started the master's program while he's still in Nigeria, mm -hmm. online. He will just go there and complete it much later. You know. Um, so, the opportunities are enormous. I want you to know, if you have problem deciding on your career, the, the choice of your career, please call us, speak with us, go to careerwise.ng, we have coaches that can coach you. If you are not even sure, if maybe you can do many things, we can do assessment for you. With our assessment tools, we will put all of this into consideration. We will tell you at least the first five things you can do and you succeed in them. You know, this, these tools help you to uh, dissect them. We'll move a little further to something else. Mr. Ihenecho is also a playwright. 
Uh, I've told you about that. He's written a couple of plays. One of them is Two Left Legs. Two Left Legs. Uh, back in the university, some of us are not very good dancers. So when you are not a good dancer, you are said to have two left legs. And of course, with two left legs, you can't dance. <laughs> you need a left and a right leg. Um, and this play was read and uh, performed in Royal Courts of Art in UK. I mean, this is, this is a, a theater, it's a world-renowned theater where the works of people like Shoyinka, uh, Shakespeare, Harold Pinter have been performed. And, and he was privileged to be there. But you see, the play itself is a strong statement play. You know, um, by the way, I have, I have gift for the first five of you that would log in to watch this interview. Um, so just, just DM me once you log in. We have gift from him that we are going to be giving to you. A copy of this play, True Left Legs. Tell us more about the play and then how it fit. <laughs> Uh, two left legs. <laughs> it's an uh, amazing play. Actually, we I, I began writing that play as the um, uh, there was a name for it before we eventually agreed to make it two left legs. I think it was the exchange. The working title. Yes, was the exchange. Okay. Um, we again it started from the University of Jos. Mm. I think I was in my third year okay. when I. Um, uh, applied. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ellison yeah. uh, saw the advertisement from the British Council, Council. Okay. in collaboration with the Royal Court Theatre in London, yeah. uh, asking young playwrights or emerging playwrights to send in a sample of their plays. Uh, and so we did. I was able to send uh, one of my plays uh, I called um, uh, this Shokoto, something like that. I don't know what I called it. And it was a two-page play, play, and amazingly, it was selected mm. among the entries. Um, yeah, Mr. Niger. Mm. So, so from from three level, we began going for the program. It was like a res a residency program. Okay. You go for a week, spend a whole week in in Lagos, being trained, and then you come back. And we kept doing that about twice a year or something like that, and then we continue. So, um, by the time we were done with the Nigerian uh, version okay. uh, because we had to produce we are 12 from the country okay. and we produced about 12 plays I, I, I worked on uh, female genital uh, mutilation, mutilation okay. uh, the, the plays that will give us back our bodies okay. and um, so when that play was uh, staged also and read at the Terra Culture hmm. in Lagos uh, one of the professors who came was angry with the ending uh, because I denied justice mm -hmm. and he stood up and said what kind of play is this how will you not allow this woman have her, her, her revenge or her justice why will she be killed and nothing is done about it and who wrote the play I said I did tell us I said actually this was the reaction I wanted when I wrote it, when I wrote it. and he was like really I said yes because most times the audience leaves the the theater, knowing that the solution has been presented to them. Mm. But I want them to be angry to and go out this. and make the solution happen. Mm. I was like, okay, wow. Um, in that case, um, when the play is published, he wants to have a copy. <laughs> you know? and, so, and so that's how we began. And they now said, okay, for UK, yeah. we should write a, a new play, play altogether. And out of the two of us, only twelve five, of you. yes, only twelve, only five was going to be selected for UK. So that was a time that Nigeria was being uh, berated with the issue of um, gay marriage yeah. and issues like that. Mm. And the Senate under David Mark were deliberating it seriously. So Nigeria was a serious crisis. So I I prayed about it and I had a very clear inspiration. You know, in theater we believe that there is place for inspiration, yeah. whatever you call it. Some yeah. call it the, mu the, uh, the muse yeah. and so on. I, I, I say the Holy Spirit gives me my inspiration. Yeah. And he said, said, write about the matter. It's a body matter, write about it. So I wrote about it. And when I sent it, the first time they read it, they, they sent back a reply and say, yeah, the issue is, uh, is complicated. But, well, they don't believe that the issue is strong enough. So I said, well, right now in this country, yeah. it's an issue. Yeah. And Nigeria is the most 
populous black nation on yeah. earth. If this is an issue yeah, in Nigeria, yeah, yeah. it's a global issue. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so they said, they, they go ahead, so I wrote the play, and before you know it, we, I made it among the five uh, to go to the UK. I was the only one who traveled from this part of the, the country, north. from the yeah. north, uh, to the UK. The rest of them were four of them from Lagos, Axis, and we all met at Heathrow and went to the Royal Court. And so we got to rehearse the play. And uh, my director, I didn't, of all five of us, I didn't get a director on time. Because no director in the UK was willing, was willing to direct my play. Uh, they felt the matters were too touchy, yeah. too controversial. But as I was coming to the UK, I saw billboards, you know, of uh, Olympic medalists who could say on the billboard that they were gay. So I was wondering what was important. I don't know. And um, so finally I got a director. His name is Rami. He's a, he's a Jew. Yeah. And uh, I got some African uh, actors, actors okay. from Ghana, from Jamaica, from name it, to give the play life. So we rehearsed and had a very wonderful time. And on the day of presentation, uh, it was presented, uh, even though it was the last entry for that day, uh, for some reasons, <laughs> based on today. And when they finished, I think they did something that I found very unusual. Mm. Usually, you don't ask your audience after the play, for questions, hmm. and um, they asked the audience for questions. They called all five of us out to take a bow, and they asked for questions. And all questions were directed at me. At you, and uh, they kept asking why I had to do a play like this, why I had to make a gay issue look so bad, you know. And so I took some time to answer the question, and it hit me hmm. there. And I asked the audience there. Um, is, is there anybody here in the audience with two left legs? Hmm. And they said, no, that's absurd. Okay. I said, well, that's good. Anybody with two right legs? And they said, nobody with two right legs. I said, that's, absurd. that's also good. I said, well, God made them male and female. Wow. And if you said it's absurd to have two, two right legs, legs or two left legs, yeah. then why is it normal that a man, a man will, will marry a man and a woman will marry a man? Amazingly, the play wasn't about its religious defense. Okay. I was looking at it purely from the fact that that kind of Scientific lifestyle does not support civilization. And procreation. Yes. It was, it was purely on that merit, even though I had cladded the characters. So what is the thesis of the play? It, it's just that that kind of lifestyle cannot support a sustained civilization. civilization. If we all choose to be gays now and lesbians now, in the next 50 years or 100 years, we are we wiped out. Be extinct. That's my approach. It wasn't a churchy thing. It wasn't an issue of religion. Mm. No. Mm. Even though in the story we had a bishop, mm. we had a woman yeah. and a man, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it was that. Mm. The angle was the, the, the ethics of that kind of lifestyle wow. does not support life. Wow. And that was my angle. So when I asked them and I said, and they said, nobody has two left legs. I said, well, that's your answer. And that was when I knew that my reason for going to the UK wasn't just for sightseeing or because I was the most intelligent person. No, it was just that this voice needed to be heard. Mm. The US or UK is not the standard for right and wrong. Mm. We have moral compasses mm. that have contributed to civilization, and I think we should stick to it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so the title was what? It now became two left legs. Yeah, it, it was the exchange. Uh, the exchange now but, became uh, two, two left, left legs yes. because no human being has yeah. two left legs. Like I said, uh, Ella, we just we just we just joke at people who cannot dance <laughs> that they have two left legs. We all have two legs, right and left, two hands, right and left, two arms, left, <laughs> male and female. Thank you so much, Mr. Ihenacho. This has been very interesting. I, I've enjoyed myself, and um, I think we should be winding down. Yeah. Um, on a final note. You've really impacted on a lot of young people. The unemployment rate is alarming. Um, we had to sit back and ask, what can we do? That's what led us to starting careerwise.ng to help in coaching young people. Uh, there is little or no intervention you can give to people if you cannot teach them to fish for themselves. You are still creating problems for the society. Mm. Social welfareism does not sustain an economy. Mm. 
Um, socialism does not sustain an economy. Hand out does not sustain an economy. The politicians have been doing it for years. People are still dependent on them. Crimes are increasing. So um, I like to ask you. And again, we are telling you, please, we have solutions that could help in your career. You see, career is something you engage in for almost like 35 to 40 years of your life. In fact, if you really find what you love doing, you don't get to retire mm -hmm. till death. One way or the other, you still keep doing it. So if you are not fulfilled doing what you are doing, please send us DM, go on careerwise.ng, use the contact form, let us know how we can be of help to you. What will you say? What do you think there are more interventions that we can be involved in, in helping young people? A lot of them lack directions, and that is the truth. But for those of us who we are privileged one way or the other, we may not have all of the money, we are just privileged by position, mm -hmm. we are privileged to have people listen to us, we are privileged to have one or two people we can influence. What more do you think we can do to help in reducing the unemployment? I, I want to thank you for that question. It is a very, very germane question. Um, and that is what has led us to where we are as a nation today. I, I, I truly believe that um, our population can be an, an, an advantage to us. Okay. I truly believe that uh, where we are in this country is a plus for us. Nigeria is blessed. I think, I think nobody is in doubt about how blessed we are. The, 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 our, our problem is actually leadership and of course the individuals who have failed to um, get the best of who they are. So I will truly want to uh, give this as a solution that uh, whatever you do, uh, having one stream of income cannot help, will not help. You know, and for those that it has helped in the past, someone had to do something. Okay, today people are getting married, it's no longer like our parents, where the father says sit at home, wife don't do anything. I will be the alpha and the omega. It doesn't happen. Yeah. We saw what that did. Yeah. A lot of our fathers died prematurely. prematurely. Yeah. Uh, today it's about partnership, yeah. coming together. Yeah. The wife needs to do something. Yeah. The husband does something. Yeah. And that way you keep your family going. Yeah. So uh, being multi uh, uh, skilled, multi yeah. yes, okay. helps. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are civil servant, yes. But what else can you do? Yeah. Uh, can we use the internet mm -hmm. for good? Mm -hmm. I have a niece who, all she does now, is we have been forced to sign an MOU with her mm. uh, that for every of our recharge, mm. we have to recharge through her. Mm. Whether, it's, whether it's light bill, mm. whether it's a TV subscription, mm. whether it's a calls, mm. and you know that just that family, mm. just that family That's circle, by her, is ah, enough. Mm. Mm. I mean, mm. and she put it up. The other one is doing catering. Mm. She's, she's a 200 level uh, uh, English uh, student. Mm -hmm. She's doing catering. Mm -hmm. Now that the corona issue is here, school has not resumed, she's doing catering mm -hmm. and learning it well. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. she's even still in the program, mm -hmm. but now the mother owns a provision shop. Mm -hmm. She is now baking mm -hmm. and putting in her mother's shop to sell. Her mother is selling mm -hmm. for her. Her mother gets her profit, mm -hmm. she gets her profit. Mm -hmm. Look, young people do something. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Writing, mm. they're people who write now and they say just write stories and give yeah. to us. Yeah. So, I will advise that young people, they say you are doing um, uh, what do you call it? long long vacation. It yeah. starts from there, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Secondary school, long vacation. Yeah. What does your child do at long vacation? Mm. Is it going for extra morals again, mm. or is it something different? Mm. Barbie, mm. palm stand, mm. palm sandals making, mm. uh, tailoring. Mm. Um, even those of them who are into engineering. Mm. Can they now go and, and do apprenticeship in with welding someone, in or welding something. or something? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when that child goes back to school, yeah. when the teacher is talking abstract, yeah. the guy understands how the these things work. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you say you tell someone to read medicine, I'm happy about it. During long vacation, do you send him to uh, private labs mm. to just go and help them photocopy things? Mm. Just be in that environment. Mm. Can that help him mm. understand where he's going? Mm. Uh, a child wants to 
you know, you, you work in a flying school, and, and I always laugh when I come into your office, say, learn how to fly here. <laughs> and they don't tell us how much it is. <laughs> it's in millions, you know. But bringing the children around <coughs> that area, they yeah. see planes land and take off. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that helps their interest. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say that from, from, from parents yeah. to government to church to every stakeholder in this matter, let's look at the other option. Our children cannot be brought up anymore facing just one direction, mm. I want to be a civil servant. Mm. I mean, who does that anymore mm. today? Mm. I mean, you just have to have uh, multi skills, mm. uh, ICT skills, mm. human relations skills, mm. do things that will truly help you. Mm. Uh, so that whether there's a meltdown, mm. whether there's an inflation, whatever it is, mm. you are not sinking with that uh, economy. Mm. You, you stand out. Mm. All right, so I would truly advise people to uh, work on that, love what you do. Yeah. And uh, farming is no longer for the who and cutlass. Who and cutlass. It's going to make a nice. I don't need to. With yeah. my money, I can sponsor a farm. Yes. With my money, I yes. can wait. Yes. Do all the headache, farm everything. I will buy yeah. the produce. Yeah. Preserve them and sell them. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. I look at the, the food chain. Yeah or what they call it, of a particular product. Yeah. And I, I see how it helps. Yeah. I cash into that area yeah. and everybody's happy. Yeah. There is so much that we can do yeah. Yeah. and there will be no conflict of interest. Yeah. And everybody's happy, yeah. the children are happy, the parents are happy, yeah. the government is happy. So I believe that the solution to this unemployment is with us. Yeah. We can make it happen, yeah. change our orientation, yeah. uh, decide the courses you take these days, yeah. you know, and, and you can do it. Yeah. And I know that... Um, uh, uh, with that, we are sure to succeed. Mm. And I thank you so much. Welcome to careerwise.ng, your career solution site. What we do basically is provide assessment for you, coaching for you, recruitment, internship. We have coaches. Orlando is a coach from Brazil, he's an international coach. Lara Langham from UK, my humble self, and we have some other coaches from Nigeria. You can go on our website, careerwise.ng. Use the contact form and reach out to us. Meet us on Twitter. We are careerwiseng1. Instagram. We are on Facebook. Reach out to us. We are available to help you. Wow! Thank you very much, Mr. Chow. This has been very, very interesting, and um, um, I've learned quite a lot. I'm sure you have learned also. Um, like I said, there are many ways you can get a job, and I don't know why people just wait until they are called up for interview. You can begin with internship. Okay. It's okay. You can begin as a volunteer. Okay. You can start as an apprentice. Okay. Uh, there's a popular saying in the Yoruba palace that one road does not lead to the market. Mm -hmm. Usually, a good market has more than one road. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you don't only apply, uh, 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 you know, approach your career just from the education perspective. Okay. There are many more ways. We do all of these trainings. Uh, how can you design your career? Uh, dreams, dream job, how do you design your path there? A lot of people don't pay attention to what they want to become. You are on a job right now, are you preparing yourself for another job mm -hmm. later so that if an opportunity comes, you are well equipped, you know? Um, the person who we have been speaking with has, has gained access through volunteering. He has given opportunity to people through volunteering. It's, it's an area he's very good in. And so you can do something for yourself. A parent, you can help your sibling, your, 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 your words, and then you can help your friends. Promote this video, let them watch it, let them gain insight, let them take action today. We just can't sit down anymore. We have to be part of the solution. Thank you so much, Mr. Cho, for your time. Thank you so much, uh, Shola, for inviting me, and I truly wish the audience, uh, our viewers, a great time. Yeah. Uh, to get busy. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, behind the camera, we have uh, Imade, Imade we have David. and then we have David. They are providing <laughs> technical support for us. Thank you so much. And then for you viewers, we appreciate you for watching this episode. Until we come your way at another time, thank you so much. And keep being busy. <laughs>